Good morning, sixth graders. Today's lesson is 12.3, plots and frequency tables. Our essential question, how can you use dot plots and frequency tables to display data? A dot plot is a number line with marks that show the frequency of data. Frequency is the number of times a data value occurs. Let's unlock the problem. Hannah is training for a walkathon. The table shows the number of miles she walks each day. She has one day left in her training. How many miles is she most likely to walk on the last day? What do I need to find out? Often. So let's make a dot plot. Step one. Draw a number line with the appropriate scale. The numbers are going to vary from one to nine because nine is the highest number that she walked and one is the lowest number that she walked. For each piece of data, plot a dot above the number that corresponds to the number of miles Hannah walked. Complete the dot plot by making the correct number of dots above the numbers 5 through 10. The numbers of miles Hannah walked most often is the value with the tallest stack of dots. So they've already done the 4s, so we've got a 5 here, so we're going to put a 5, another 5, we're going to put a 5, they've already, there's another 5, there's a 9. There's a 9, there's a 5, there's a 6, and there's a 5. They already did the 1 through, that. the reason I skipped the 1 through 4 is because they've already plotted them for you. So the number, the tallest stack in the plot, dot plot is 4, 5. If you notice, 5 has the tallest, therefore 5 miles is the one that she walked the most for. So the number of miles that Hannah most likely walked on the last day of her training is five miles. Explain why a dot plot, a dot plot is useful for solving this problem. A dot plot makes it easier to identify the data value that occurs the most often in a data set. Frequency table. A frequency table shows the number of times that each data value or range of value occurs a relative frequency table shows percent of time each piece of data or group of data occurs. Example one, Jill kept a record of her workout times. How many of Jill's workouts lasted 90 minutes? So let's make a frequency table. So here's her workout times. Notice that it's in minutes. Step one, list the workout times from the first column. So you can see that they set up the 30 minutes, 60, 90, and 120 because those are the most frequencies. Now we're going to record the frequency of each time in the frequency column. So they've already done the 30, but let's make sure they did it right. There's 130, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now we're going to do the 60 minutes. I'm going to change my color. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it looks like 11 times she worked out for 60 minutes. And then let's do 90 minutes. 1, 2, 3, 4. It looks like 4 times she worked 90 minutes. And then finally, 120 minutes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six. Six times she did 120 minutes. So if we're looking for exactly 90 minutes, that means I'm looking right here in this column. And in 90 minutes, she worked out four times. So four of Jill's workouts lasted exactly 90 minutes. Example two. The table shows the number of laps Ricardo swam each day. What percentage of the days did Ricardo swim 18 or more laps? So here's his laps all recorded. Make a relative frequency table. Step one, determine the equal intervals for the data list intervals in the first column. So they decided that three through seven, eight through 12, 13 through 17, and 18 through 22. If I'm looking at this, then they're going to count the number of data values in each interview and record this in the frequency column. So I'm looking over here, doing just like I did before. So you can see that they've already done most of them. But so if it's a three through a seven, so I'm looking 
five is in between three through seven, six is in between that, three. All right, so it looks like we have four times. And if I'm looking at the frequencies of eight to 12 laps, I'm gonna change my color again. So now I'm looking at eight to 12 laps. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six times. Now if we're looking at 13 through 17 laps, they went through and they did that one as well. So you kind of get the idea. So now that we have that, step three is to divide each frequency by the total number of data values and then write that as a percent in the relative frequency column. Okay, that's a mouthful. But basically what you're gonna do, let me erase this so you can see a little bit better. You can see that there are 20 data values together, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there are 20 data values all together. So if I take the frequency and I divide it by the 20, then I'm gonna get the percentage of the relative frequency. So on the first one, they've already done it for you. Four divided by 20, and if I divide that out, I'm gonna get 0.2 or 20%. Then they did six divided by 20. So I get 0.3 or 30%. Now for this one, I'm gonna do seven divided by 20. And seven divided by 20, so if I go do my 20, and I go seven, remember 20 can't go into the sevens, so I have to put my decimal, and 20, so I put my zero, 20 goes into 70, three times gives me 60. I subtract, I get the 10, I add another zero, I bring it down, 20 goes into 100 five times, right? So I'm gonna get 35%, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing with the next one. You're gonna do, this time it's three divided by 20 because we've got three. So three divided by 20, put my decimal, put my zero. It goes in one times because 20 times one is 20. I subtract, I get 10, add a zero, bring it down. 20 goes into 100 five times. So I get 15%. So divide each frequency by the total number of data values, which we did and then write the results as percent in the relative frequency columns. We did that. Then it says to complete the regular relative frequency table, and we did that. Now, Ricardo swam 18 or more laps on how many percent of the days? Well, 18 or more laps is right here, 18 to 22, and the percentage was 15. So he swam those 15% of the days. Okay, so they want us to complete the dot plot. They've already done it for one and two, so now we need to complete the rest of them. So let's look for threes. One, two. So I only see two threes. Let me see. Oh, I see three threes. So I'm going to put one, two, three dots. Now I'm going to look for fours. So I'm looking for fours, and I get one, four. Now I'm looking for fives. One, two, looks like I've got three fives. One, two, three. Now I'm looking for sixes. I've got one, two, three, four, five sixes. One, two, three, four, five. Whoops, I did not mean to put that one on top. Should be five sixes. Now I'm looking for the sevens. So I'm looking for the sevens and I don't see any sevens. So now I'm looking for eights. One, two, three. So one, two, three. So he biked, three times he biked eight kilometers. Now I'm looking for the nines and I see one nine. Now I'm looking for the tens and I see one, two tens. Now I'm looking for the elevens and I see one eleven. And now I'm looking for the twelves and I see one twelve. All right, so what was the most common distance that Lionel biked and how do you know? Well, it's right here. It's gonna be six kilometers. And I know that because it has the tallest stack. 
Now the next one asks me to make a frequency table and use the intervals 1 through 3 kilometers, 4 through 6 kilometers, 7 through 9 kilometers, and 10 through 12 kilometers. So I go ahead and I do that. And then to get the frequencies, I can look right back up here in my chart so I can write them down. So 1 through 3 kilometers, they had 2 plus 3 is 5 plus another 3, 9. Oops, actually that's eight, sorry, because it's six plus two is eight. Then if I'm looking at the four through six kilometers, I'm looking right here. And when I add those up, I get nine. Now I'm looking at the seven and nine kilometers. And when I add those up, I get four. And then I'm looking at the 10 through 12 kilometers, and I've got one, two, three, four of those as well. So that's my chart. Next, on number four, it says make a relative frequency table using the same numbers as the interval cycles. So I'm basically taking the same chart, only now I'm adding the percentages at the end. So I'm actually going to keep this chart here because it's the same. It's just, so this is going to be the same exact thing. The only difference is now I'm going to have the relative frequency. So to find the relative frequency, I need to first find out how many numbers there were total. So there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So there were 25 total times that he biked. Um, and so to get this frequent, to get this frequency right here, I'm going to do 8 divided by 25. And when I do 8 divided by 25, I get 32%. The next number, I'm going to do 9 divided by 25, and when I do 9 divided by 25, I get 36%. The next number, I'm going to do 4 divided by 25, and when I do that, I get 16%. And we've already done the 4, so this is also going to be 16%. So again, this piece is for 4. Okay, so I'm going to have you work on the Jamboard problems that I have for you, and if you need my help, I will be on the carpet. And when you are finished with that, you're going to be working on Think Central. Good luck.